Hey, and welcome once again to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. My name is Mike Freeman. I'm the pastor at Valley Christian Fellowship in Longview, Washington. And today we are continuing in John chapter 11. We're walking through this, this chapter where Jesus's friend Lazarus, has, uh, he, he has fallen ill. And Jesus has said that this is not going to end in death, but for the glory of God. And, uh, and so now our text begins to uh, move us forward. And we actually are going to see that Lazarus, in fact, dies. Which might seem like we're kind of uh, contradicting. or what, what, there, there, This leaves you a question in your mind. What exactly is going on here? Jesus says this is not going to end in death. And so let's look at our text over here. Chapter 11, starting in verse 11 today, it says, After saying these things, he, Jesus, said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. And the disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he'll recover soon. They say, Jesus, you know, when someone's sick, they should probably rest. Like, Jesus, I'm not a doctor, but I think that if Lazarus sleeps, it's probably a good thing. Verse 13. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant he was talking or taking rest and sleep. Verse 14, then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. <laughs> There's a lot happening here. But let's look here. Verse 14. I want us to understand this, this verse right here. So helpful. It says, Lazarus has died. And then verse 15. And for your sake, I am glad. Or for your sake, I rejoice. This seems so strange. Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I rejoice. Why in the world would Jesus rejoice over death? Death is not the way it's meant to be. Death, death is a, a consequence of the fall. Well, here we go. He says, I'm glad I was not there. So that you may believe. So that you may believe. Now, right here, what you find is Jesus rejoices that Lazarus has died and that he was not there. Because if he was there, he would have healed him and Lazarus would not have died. But Jesus rejoices he was not there because ultimately this is going to benefit the disciples. Spoiler alert, Jesus is going to resurrect Lazarus. And upon that resurrection, Jesus' disciples, their faith will be strengthened. They will have a confidence. They will grow in their faith. Jesus wants them to believe. Now, believe what? That Jesus is a really good physician? That Jesus has some special medical technology or, or magical abilities that he's able to heal someone? No, Jesus wants them to believe that he is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. So Jesus says, but let us go to him. Verse 16, Thomas called the twins, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. What's he talking about? Well, remember, we've seen that the, the religious leadership of the Jews, they would love to kill Jesus. And so Thomas is thinking, you know what? We're going to go there, and they're going to turn against Jesus, and we're with him, and so they're going to turn against us, and it's all, it's over. It's over. That's, that's what he's thinking. That's where his mind goes. But look back at Jesus' purpose in all this. Jesus rejoices over the consequence of the fall that will result in Christ being seen as the Savior. I think this is our ancient way for our modern day. I think this is, this is a core truth for believers today. See, when we face death and tragedy and heartache, when we face difficult situations that, that hurt our hearts or that, that might really make us question so much about life, when we lose a loved one, in those moments, that, that grief, I don't have to tell you, that grief can be overwhelming. But look what Jesus does. He says, I use, I use the places where there is a consequence of the fall. I use that so that people will believe in me. He says, in those moments 
where your faith is being uh, questioned or in those moments when, when your life is being shaken, in those moments, your faith can become solidified as you look to Christ and as you believe in who he is or your faith can sink as you turn from Christ and, and, and don't believe in who he is. See, we, we must always be really approaching those difficult situations, trusting that despite our pain, God is faithful. God loves us. He's all-powerful. He is sovereign, and he is working in our lives for good. Jesus, he connects the dots really quickly, really clearly with his disciples. This is going to end in something good for you. We have a harder time connecting those dots. Sometimes we're not even able to. There, there are situations I've looked at and I said, Lord, I have no idea how you're going to use this for good, but I'm still going to trust that you're good. I have no idea how you're going to use this to benefit your people, but I'm still going to trust that you are faithful. How about you? What are the difficult situations in your life you're experiencing right now? What is the tragedy? Where is the pain? Where is the sorrow? Where is the heartache? In those moments, here's the question. And the question gets us to the very core of the ancient way for our modern day right now. Do you trust that God is good even in the pain? Do you trust that Jesus is Savior even in the sorrow? Will you look at Christ and, and have your faith strengthened or will you turn from Christ and see your faith sink? See, in those moments, our ancient way for our modern day is to trust that Jesus will use everything to lead us to trust in him more and more. This is our ancient way for our modern day.